10th of December 1943, Tiger tanks of the German Army's 502nd Heavy Panzer Battalion were covering the retreat of German forces from the Leningrad sector of the Eastern Front, following the failure of the Axis to break the siege of the great city and finally capture it. The 502nd Battalion had been at the forefront of the summer 1943 fighting around Lake Ladoga and around Neuville. In wintry conditions on the 10th of December 1943, the 502nd's tanks found themselves under heavy Soviet air attack, as waves of Red Air Force Ilyushin IL-2 Sturmovik ground attack planes relayed over the 502nd's positions, forcing crews to close up hatches and endure the constant racket of bombs and cannon shells. Sturmoviks were able to deliver a variety of ordnance onto targets, including some tank-killing weapons like rockets and shape-charge bomblets, making them as dangerous opponents on the Eastern Front as RAF typhoons and tempests would become in the West, particularly during the Battle of Normandy in June to August 1944. Sturmovik's twin 23mm cannons could also make a mess of soft-skin vehicles, infantry formations, artillery positions, and many other targets. The constant strafing runs by Soviet aircraft were an incredible irritation, causing supplies of hot food and maintenance tasks to be suspended as the Big Tigers sat in overwatch positions, the crews unable to get out or even leave hatches open for long. Among the tank commanders was a young officer commanding a platoon of Tigers, who was rapidly acquiring a fearsome reputation as a tank ace, Lieutenant Otto Karius, a slight man with the look of a university professor. Aboard his Tiger, the gunner Unteroffizier Heinz Kramer was completely fed up with the situation. The Tigers just had to sit still and take the Soviet air attacks. Kramer expressed his frustrations to Karius. Kramer suggested they shoot back at the Soviet planes. The only way to engage aircraft was to use the turret-mounted machine gun, but that would have involved standing in the turret exposing a crewman to enemy fire. The machine gun was also not particularly effective against the Soviet aircraft, which were known as flying tanks for good reason due to their heavy armor. Kramer instead suggested using the Tiger's 8.8cm main gun. It seemed a ludicrous suggestion, but under the circumstances, Karius gave his permission. The Sturmoviks approached the German position along the same route each time. Karius moved the turret to line up on this bearing, Kramer elevating the gun. A high explosive shell was loaded, for the Tiger did not carry any anti-aircraft ammunition, only armor piercing and HE. Both men watched carefully for the approach of the next wave of Soviet fighter bombers, Karius talking Kramer onto the target. The Tiger was not designed for deflection shooting. Tigers would always fire stationary. Carefully lining up on the formation, Kramer and Karius thought their aim looked right, and Kramer fired, the big round soaring away into the Soviet formation, but missed. Quickly, the loader slammed another 8.8cm shell into the breach. Kramer adjusted his aim and again fired. The shells soared away into the next group of aircraft and clipped off part of one of the Sturmovik's wings, the aircraft out of control careering across the sky over the 502nd's position to crash some distance behind the German lines. A roar of triumph spread among the German tankers, many stupefied that one of their number had managed to shoot down a plane with a tank gun. Karius would write in his book, Tigers in the Mud, that Kramer's achievement was unparalleled on the Eastern Front. Minutes later, two more Sturmoviks were brought down, though not by Tiger tank guns this time. Instead, they collided and tore each other apart before crashing. Otto Karius would go on to rack up a staggering 150 tank kills before the end of the war, mostly on the Eastern Front and received the Knight's Cross with oak leaves. After the war, he became a pharmacist. 
He died in 2015 at the age of 94. Unteroffizier Heinz Kramer would also receive the Knight's Cross later on in the war, but was killed in action in 1944. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon, details in the description box below.